got the recording. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah Hayya ala salam Hayya ala الشركي والوثنية والعلحاد وأنكذنا من دراقة الجاهلية وشر والفساد أحمده تعالى وأشكره وأتوب إليه وأستغفره جل على الانداد والتنزه عن الصاحبة والعولاد وتعالى عن مشبحة العباد وأشهر أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهارة من علم معناها وعمل من مقتضاها بمقتضاها وحقق المراد وأشهر أن النبي محمد عبد الله ورسوله إمام موحدين وخاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين والحادي إلا سبيل الحق والرشاد والشافي المشفع يوم المعاد صلى الله والسلام وبارك وعليه وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أمجاد وتابعينا ومن تبعهم بإسهان إلا يوم التناد الحمد لله الذي هدانا للإسلام ومن علينا به وأقرجنا في الخير أمة فنسأله توفيقا لما يحب ويرضى والحفظ مما يقره ويسقطه And praises belong to Allah brothers and sisters We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
who has purified our hearts from corruption, from shirk. And he has given us and protected us from the corruption of arrogance and ignorance. We praise him and we thank him. We turn to him and we seek his forgiveness. We thank him because he is above and high above anything associated in the creation. He has no father, no son, no children. <coughs> There's nothing in the creation that resembles him. Nothing of his servants. This is the statement of one who understands what it means and acts according to its implications. We also send peace and blessings because we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the servant in the last message of Allah, and he is the leader of monotheism. He is the seal of all prophets and messengers. And it is he, on the day who will be interceded, and his intercession will be accepted. We send peace and blessings upon him, his family, his companions, and all those who follow him to the day of judgment. We also praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, that Allah has guided us to Islam, raised us in the best nation, bestowed his favor upon us. We ask him to help us to live in consonance, in accordance to this statement. And we want him to be happy to that which is pleasing to him and to do the things that he loves and to stay away from that which is displeasing to him. Brothers and sisters, teachers and parents, we have a great responsibility towards our children. If you notice the word tarbiyah from rub, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the conditions of the usul al-salatha, one of the principles of tawheed al-rububiyyah, the oneness, some people translate Lord, but this is not a good translation. Rub, a rub, it means nourisher, provider, one who provides, one who nourishes. So the oneness and the unity of Allah who maintains everything in creation, he nourishes it. He brings it to fruition. It's the same thing if you plant a, a, a flower. What are you going to do with it? You're going to plant it in the dirt, make sure the soil is good, and you're going to nourish it with what? Water, air, the sun, so it's getting nourished. It's being provided with its necessary elements so that it can continue to exist. So Allah is the nourisher, the maintainer of creation. And he provides for everything and everyone, including the animals, so that it can continue to live out its life until the day of judgment. So Torbiya is to cultivate, you know, like a farmer, cultivating the soil and the, his garden. On the greater scale, Allah provides for humanity. He brings them to their fruition based on the necessary elements for their survival. So that is one of the uh, descriptions of Allah that he provides for his creation. Now for us, it's the same thing as a, a, a woman when she has a child, she nourishes as well. She's given that kind of tolerance to her child when she, the child is drinking the milk, taking care of that child, raising that child with what? The necessary things to keep its survival. As the woman does this, and the, the man does this as well, mostly the women. Now there's another stage of tolerance. Now that was the physical and the emotional now the other stage is that we as parents have to educate them, cultivate them based on Tawheed, the oneness of Allah. 
This is the advice that we must do to our children. It is their right. First and foremost, marry a righteous woman. This is the right of the child that you, before they're born into existence, this is your right, children, teenagers, young men, young ladies. Your right is that your parents should marry a righteous wife. And he should marry a righteous woman. Why? It's, infor it's important for Torbia. The reason why is because you choose a mate, you got to make sure they believe in Allah. They have to believe in Allah. It was a time in Umar al-Qattab's time that a man came to him and complained about his child being disobedient, he was disrespectful, he was hard-headed, stubborn. And so Umar gave him a, re a reprimand to the child. But then the child asked Umar a question. What is the right that my parents owe me? He said to educate you to have uh, a righteous wife and to teach Quran and to raise you. And he said, well, my father blames me, but he married a fire worshiper, a star worshiper. So Umar came back with his decision and he said, your son has more of a complaint than you have on him. Because now you want to worry why he's behaving the way he's behaving or she's worrying the way she's behaving. But look who you chose as your mate. Someone who doesn't believe in Allah who commits shirk. And now you want to complain against the disobedient actions of your child. I blame you first. Because the apple don't fall far, fall far from the tree. There's a lot of people in this society who blame the children. Oh, that's a bad boy. He's bad. I ain't going to have no more children. Well, you're the one that's supposed to be raising the children. The children don't raise themselves. Or you're the ones that are allowing them to be influenced by things in society that causes that influence to make them be the way they are. That's why we are the shepherds. Everyone is a shepherd, and you will be questioned to that which you are shepherding over. See, if you notice something about the, a lamb or a sheep, the sheep can't defend themselves, but the shepherd is there to defend the sheep. Everyone has a defense mechanism but the sheep, and that's why the shepherd is important to the sheep, because he has to protect and guard his sheep from who? From the wolves. You can't blame the wolf for eating your sheep. You can't, because the nature of the wolf is to eat sheep. You can't blame the, the wolf from doing his job. You got to blame the shepherd because the shepherd is supposed to protect his sheep from the wolves. So are we going to be the shepherds or the wolves? Or are we going to help the wolves eat our children? And what I mean is those things that's in society that we are uh, subjugated them to when they look at these uh, things on the internet, Facebook, and all that foolishness that's on Facebook, giving them iPads, expensive toys to be able to see and view all these kind of things that's going on, you got to be the shepherd. Well, Imam well, Rotten well, was Muslim on the The Imam is, he's a shepherd too over his community. He has to lead the community, not to his personality, but to the oneness of Allah. So the Imam is going to be questioned as well. Well, And the man is a shepherd over his family. He's the man, he has to take care of his children, his wife, make sure that they have all the things that's necessary, the tarbiyah, the cultivation of the family life, is going down in the Muslim world today. There's one billion people on Facebook, one million of them are Muslims, and you will be surprised what they be saying on these sites. I go on Facebook, I advertise some of my lectures and things, other than that, I wouldn't be there because there's so much trash that are being said by Muslims. I expect non-Muslims to talk the way they talk. But Muslims, the stuff they say, the things that they're doing, we have become fashion statements on Facebook. Our faces is planted all over. Women have taken the hijab in terms of, if they're covering up, right, they, they're fashion with it, with niqabs on and they're dazzling their face. I, I mean, it just doesn't make sense that you're there on Facebook with niqab when you're actually trying to cover yourself. So why put yourself, you want to be seen? 
is a false validation. What I mean by validation, people are trying to get notif noticed, noticed, so they want to put it on Facebook, sh showing their food on Facebook. Why, who want to look in your living room? Why are you showing food on Facebook? Showing what we did, everyone tells what they do. I mean, nobody covers their form anymore today. Muslims, I went down to the shopping mall, I'm going to get a pair of shoes. So what, who cares? Is that news? They're talking to Facebook like Facebook is a person. Why are you telling the Facebook what you're doing? And then you don't know who's on Facebook because you got a lot of prowlers and psycho people, you know, and you're exposing yourself to all this stuff. They know whatever you're doing, everything, every moment you're putting something up there. Well, I'm standing in the air, I'm sitting here looking in the ceiling, don't know what to do. Muslim, you don't know what to do in two, two in the morning? Wake up with the hajjud and make two rakah. What do you mean you don't know what to do? I'm staring. This is what they put on Facebook. Muslim, I'm staring in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the, in, I'm laying down on my pillow and I'm looking in the air, don't know what to do. Tahajud, brother. Hello. <laughs> really? We got to be shepherds. Protect our children from all this stuff. Luchman was wise. First thing he said, Ya Bunaya. You, you see this word, ya, yeah, right? It's, when you have some real emotional connection to someone dear to you. Ya bunayya. Or like the Prophet. Ya Rasulullah. It's hurufu nadai, right? It's a vocative call to show affection when you call out to someone dear to you. Do not worship anything with Allah. The, this is what he told his son. We have to teach them the oneness of Allah and then establish salat. Right? So we have to protect our children from all these things. Being a good shepherd, we have a great responsibility. <coughs> so Tarbiya is about cultivating spiritually, mentally, and every level. Giving them Islamic education. Teaching them good manners. Teaching them how to respect elders. Respect the teachers. Do not walk into the earth like you can move the mountains. Allah is also advising, meaning, you know, sometimes you get angry at your parents, and this is something you children got to stop doing. You get angry because you, you don't like what they said, and then you walk off like this. And Allah says, do not walk is a sign of arrogance, because you cannot move the mountains which you're stomping. He gives an analogy. And do not raise your voice when your mom or your father or any elder calls, yes, ma'am, yes, mother, yes, father, yes, teacher, respectfully. This is what we got to teach them. Some of our kids are becoming rude. So we got to teach them because raising your voice, Allah gives an analogy of a donkey. The worst kind of sound is a donkey. The donkey is the most stubbornest animal that I know. So don't compare yourself to a donkey by your actions. In fact, you'll be worse because a donkey's created to be like that. But you're not. You have intelligence. So it's up to the parents to teach them good manners, how to speak to the people, how to say assalamu alaikum. You don't have to say hello. I'm, I mean, I'm going to go take it a little further. That's the greetings of them. Assalamu alaikum, the best greeting. Why shouldn't we want to instill in them the best greeting that would be the greeting from paradise? Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Another Muslim, don't tell me hello. I'm not going to answer you. <laughs> oh, how you doing? No, I'm not. I'm going to sit there. I'm not going to answer you. I don't know what hi means. What does hello mean? I don't know what it means. Someone can give me that definition later on. I don't know what it means. I know what they're trying to say. But assalamu alaikum has meaning. See, Arabic is direct to the point. You don't have to guess what someone's saying. You don't have to look for uh, words. It tells you what it is by derivatives, right? Where it derived from. Assalam, wishing peace, security, and safety. Assalamu alaikum, may peace and security be upon you. Wa alaikum salam, and so as you. So we teach them good manners. 
educating them about oneness of Allah, how to behave, and also who they should be friends with. You don't want them to become close to people who don't have good character. Because what happens, if they're not strong, they take on the personality of the person who they're always with. Their khalil is more than a friend, it's a bosom friend. When you get close to a person, you begin to start imitating some of his ways. So that's why you also want him to be amongst good character individuals. Today's girls will be wives, mothers. So there's a special attention to the women. We have to teach them how to not intermingle in terms of other boys in those kind of ways. And we don't want to be extreme neither. You can say salamu alaikum to a sister. Today, you say salamu alaikum is like taboo. People go to the extreme and greet them and keep moving. And teach the girls to cover up and not display themselves like the women of Jahiliya and Tabaruj, dazzling. You know, make sure they cover themselves correctly and always be a young lady. And let them keep their shyness. Don't say, oh, it's shy, go, go to sit on his lap. No, 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 no. Don't tell them, don't be shy, because shy is hayat. And you want them to keep that in them. Shyness guards them and protects them from immorality. So don't tell them, don't be shy. Yes, be shy. You know, and don't tell them to go sit on somebody's lap. No, you don't want that because you're trying to raise and cultivate tarbiyah. You're trying to cultivate them correctly. You want to make sure you provide the necessary elements for their emotional, spiritual, physical well-being. So that's why it's very important. We have a great responsibility. There's three dimensions of society. Home is the first education, right? Then the institution of school, and then society. These are the three dimensional situations that we're in. And they have to be in correlation. What's teaching at home, the school is trying to build and complement. What happens is that sometimes the teachers are working so hard for your children, our children, to have the greatest principles in education on every level, and then they go home and you destroy it by allowing them to do everything else other than what is doing in school. That's why they're very important, all these interlinks. You see? So it's very important, don't break what school, there's no such thing as after three o'clock, you can behave wrongfully. Islam is every day, every time of our life. You see? So whatever's being taught home should reflect the school, vice versa and society. Whatever you've been taught at home, you should act like that in society. Whatever you're taught in society or at home should be in the class. And then you begin to see the greatest compliments and the behavior of our children, we will see productivity. So we have to raise them correctly. Don't allow them to be in fantasies, watching fantasies. Oh, it's innocent. You know, these little cartoons and stuff. Sponges. I never grew up with uh, where sponges is talking, rats are speaking and stuff like that. Spoons are speaking now. <laughs> Come on, don't let them watch that. He's got uh, men looking like monsters. <laughs> Scratch, looking like uh, mucus. We don't want our children looking at stuff like that. We have, they have a lot of Islamic uh, videotapes now. You know, I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, I know what time we're living in because the odds are against our children. They are, it's a lot of stuff that they can get into. Technology, the, you know, social media, it's, it's more than what we, we were growing up. So that's why I'm stressing these kind of points, not trying to be extreme, but I know what we're up against, our children are up against. And you and I have to do a better job in cultivating tarbiyah so that we can raise the best Muslims what we read about, like even Abbas and all these great heroes, young teenagers, 17, 18 year old, already leaving governments. You see? We have to allow them to have this kind of thinking. And the only way they can get this is you repetitiously conditioning them with these kind of Sahaba. Walhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.
Asyadu an la ilaha illallah wa asyadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alaihi wa sallam The other aspect of Tarbiyah is to make them aware of the political and current events Why? There's a lot of deception There's a lot of tricks by particular leaders in the world Do not shy away from this Don't be like Christians and Jews Oh. We don't talk about politics, politics and religion don't get along. No. Islam talks about every issue that faces us. We have to teach them about Ad-Dajjal. We have to let them know and be able to draw the connection. How is that happening today? Of course, Ad-Dajjal ain't here. He's a person that will come. But there is a phenomenon. There's, there's bits and pieces of signs of what he will come with, deception, shubuhat, obscurity. I mean, shubuhat is like someone trying to make the truth look like falsehood and falsehood look like truth. Or someone who has a, a dubious understanding. They're not clear on how to decipher the truth from the falsehood. We have to teach them uh, and draw the connection between the story of Musa and Fir'aun. How do we apply that in our present day? Because these verses are not there just for some historical reading. They have connection to what we're dealing with today. Magicians and people who play tricks and lie and deceive and use different words to try to make it have different meanings. How do we tie in the story of Musa salam, and the magicians along with what we face today, which they call the media? There was a show, uh, Denzel Washington, very good show. Uh, it was the, the great debate, teaching and educating them how to intellectually debate in the fields of society. We have to train our kids how to be able to give dawah, train them how to answer stuff and how to deal with the questions that are coming at them in terms of the society because they are asking a whole bunch of things, they're saying a lot of things against Islam and people are just jumping on and I blame the parents. Because parents, you're starting to believe everything that CNN says, everything Fox says, you're already saying, oh yeah, down with those, we're not like these Muslims. How do you know that they're doing this? I'm not saying that there are Muslims out here doing these things. But you know, one principle that Allah teaches us first. <laughs> oh, you who believe, if a wicked person comes to you with any news, فَتَبَيَّنُوا <laughs> Ascertain the facts. Do investigation first before believing anything. Before believing anything, I don't know. What's your, what's your opinion on this group? They call ISIS. I don't know if they call. I don't know if anyone's going around calling themselves ISIS. I don't know if anyone's going around there calling themselves Taliban. I don't know if anyone's going around really literally saying, my name is El Qaeda. I don't know if anyone's really doing that. I say, that when there's a gang of criminals, they call themselves by criminal names. The Bloods and the Crips is a gang, a notorious gang. But someone who's supposed to be a notorious killer, I don't think they will call themselves Taliban. <laughs> a Taliban is a student. Or a person who says Al-Qaeda. What is that? The basis and the principles. Aqida comes from that word. So what I'm saying is investigate. I don't just believe in it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, first and foremost. And I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon because you want me to say, well, we're not this and that, or sign some petition and say, I'm not a terrorist. I'm not doing all that. And we shouldn't teach our children to do that neither, to be compromisers and cowards. That's why Tarabia educated them politically and, and, and intellectually how to deal with these tricks of the media, how to deal with these things. Giving dawah, inviting them to the way of Allah, this is what we call to. And protecting them from all kinds of deception. We have to teach them. And it's very important because the Prophet said, there soon will come upon you years of deceit, that the liar will be believed, and the truthful person will be not believed. The trustworthy will be distrusted, and the untrustworthy one will be trusted. So everything's going bad. People believe a lie more than the truth. And people believe bigger lies than little ones because they lie in little things. 
So brothers and sisters, let's just focus on this great task that you and I have and help, especially this place, uh, you know, this, this school. Um, it's very important. Tarabia is a perfect name for this school. And you have to do everything in your power, rather it's money, whatever it is, help them and the teachers here and all the leaders here to struggle to make this thing right for them. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. May Allah send blessings and peace upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah forgive us for our sins, protect us from the torment of the grave and the hellfire, protect us from the signs and tri tribulations of ad dajjal May Allah have mercy on our brothers and sisters. For our brother who passed away, or sister who passed away, we offer dua for them. And we, af after this, they will be going to the burial ground. Uh, brother Navi will tell you more. But we offer dua for him right now, inshallah. And may Allah guide us and give him Jannah. Jannah, and give him light in his grave. And may Allah forgive him for all his sins. And may Allah continue to guide him and make it easy upon his people. Allahu la ilahi allahu ahal khayyu kayyum. لا تقود سنات ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من دل لي يشوه وإنه وإلا بإذن يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما كلفهم ولا يؤتون بشيء من علمه لا بما شاء وسيأكرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤدوا هيثهما وهو الأليو الذين أقيموا الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أيها الرسول أيها الرسول أيها الرسول أيها الرسول قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله شيخ تفضل تفضل الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يقينون أولئك على هدى ربهم وأولئك هم مفلحون إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أأندرتهم أم لم تنتهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم قيشوا ولهم أذاب عظيم ومن الناس من يقول ومن بالله وباليوم الآخر وما هم بمؤمنين يخادعون الله والذين لا آمنوا وما يتقون إلى أنفسهم وما يشعرون 
في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا ولهم أداب وليم بما كانوا يكذبون وإذا كل لهم لا تفسدوا في الأرض قالوا قالوا إنما نحن مصلحون ألا إنهم هم مفسدون ولكن لا يشكرون الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والتين والزيتون وتور سنين وهذا البلاد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وأمنوا صالحات فلهم أجر خير ممنون فما يخذبك بعض بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم We yesterday we uh, we had two brothers in our community who, uh, who passed away. In Allahi wa Nayyadrajumun, one of them, Brother uh, uh, Anwar Aziz, he was sitting right here last Juma, uh, you know, in one of his chairs in the back, um, and we don't have him here today. Um, and the other brother, Brother Ishmael, uh, he he was a member of the Wilmington community, Masjid Al Qathir, and uh, he also passed away yesterday. So their uh, janazas have already been offered uh, by now. Um, one in Wilmington, one in New York. But their burial is immediately after Juma uh, at Silver Brooks um, Cemetery in Wilmington. 